has been bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, anti ad stuff is kind of a kind of extremely annoying. Also, apparently, Gage is barking. No, that's one of our dogs. She doesn't have her little uh, vibrating collar on, so she's barking as much as she possibly can. Oh, uh, okay. Are you ready, Fable? Only... Oh, sorry. Yeah. You wanted to say Gage? Got it. I was just gonna say we only got it like yesterday, and it taught her immediately like, oh, don't bark. But then her siblings started barking, and it kept setting up the collar, and until oh. they all have one. Ugh, that sounds like a messy situation. Oh. Yeah, and it's completely harmless. It's just like, it's just two metal prongs that buzz softly, whenever enough noise is made, and if you keep barking, like if you bark for like a minute. It will just deliver a small little. Bzz. Are you ready, Fable? Yeah. What the hell? I can't. He's glitching through the table. It's 2005. Music. I'm sitting in a movie theater for Revenge of the Sith, which will confuse oh. me in a lot of ways. But before all that, a trailer played for Advent I remember Rise watching Revenge of the Sith when I was little, because I watched Attack of the Clones, like, literally on the TV right before, and then we went to go see Revenge of the Sith when I was a little kid. And I actually really liked it. I still really like it. I know some people think it's bad, but it's definitely better than a lot of the Star Wars stuff we've gotten over the years. Yeah, yeah. And it gave us the Clone Wars, so that's why I'm really happy. Rising. At the time, this blew my mind. I had never yeah. seen a trailer for a video game in a movie theater before. My friends told that me that is true. That was very rare back too. then. It seemed like a big deal, and that connection's not a coincidence. The game mm -hmm. started to be known as the Halo Killer. It even outright said it would be the start of a trilogy of games. Okay, every time a game is known as a Halo killer, it's usually a flop because it shows that they're not making it to make a good game. They're sh they're making it to compete with another game. Like you can make it with the idea yeah. of oh, make it like this, but different. But they they're usually just doing it despite someone else. Anyway, you're saying Gage? Oh no, I was just agreeing with you. Just. Everyone has to compete with everyone. And it's stupid. Mm-hmm. I just say make games. Just just make good games. Like I wanna make a video game one day. If I become a big YouTuber by God's grace, I'll make a goddamn game. And Gage will voice a vampire lord or something. <laughs> Now I feel like he's going to tell me what is a man. Anyway. What is no, I, I think I just do the classic Richter versus Dracula. You have Uno instead. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Even more legit, it would be written by Orson but Scott Card. That, His name was all over me. To another chicken nugget. It's these chicken nuggets that I've been throwing at you, but you seem to not want to eat them. Not dino nuggies, man. Shame. Yes, they're instead shaped <laughs> like sharks. I don't know where this joke is going, so I think. <laughs> anyway. A copy of the game, and for a sci-fi game, it should be the man would be written by Orson Scott Card. His name well, is I all over know. any copy of the game. And for a sci-fi game, it should be. The man wrote Ender's Game. Schools here still have that as required reading sometimes. I have never read Ender's Game. I saw it on my on a shelf when I was a little kid. But that's all I know. But not my class. Oh, no. That's I had to read a book where... interesting uh... book. It's mainly just about teaching kids to be warriors, but using the premise of training and combat simulations as a means to actually defeat threats. Huh. Interesting. What happened? I think a Jewish kid gets sent to baseball and. <laughs> what? I don't remember the rest, but. <laughs> a Jewish kid gets hit with a baseball? That's all. <laughs> what happened? I think a Jewish kid gets hit with a baseball and. 
I don't remember the rest, but whatever. Ender's Game is great. The ch what the hell is the Chosen? Oh, so that is a hell of a name. Orson Scott Card. That sounds like a pen name. And the sequel is just as good in other oh, ways. Boy. Some people think it's even better. After that, you have Xenocide. It has interesting ideas, but not as exciting as the title would make you think. Okay. Then Children of the Mind is... It's... It's different. Um... Conclusion the, of the of Enders. Snuff books too. Wow, look at look at those. Oh. The Steam page now says working with Orson Scott Card, oh. which, as we'll talk about, is much more accurate. The trilogy never happened, and you should know how Halo killers go. It yeah. Really hardly on Xbox, but now Hayes, Fire Warrior, all the games that become Halo killers just don't get the point of Halo. On PC, it's pretty good. The one thing that's choppy everywhere is some of the cutscenes. It's Whoa. the video files themselves, and the lip syncing can be rough. There's actually a mod that re-edits most of the cutscenes, fixes some bugs, and adds widescreen support. Cool. Fortunately, I talked to GOG about it, and they just integrated it into the base game. Oh, Steam has it too, so no need to really nice. downloads. So good on Advent revising for really doing it. I can start the game with no hassle. I actually don't have a GOG account, but I honestly should with some of the stuff that they do for their games. Cool. I mean, yeah, I mean, they get heroes to Mike and Magic, and Mike and Magic working properly on modern desktops. Such an old, for such an old game, that is kind of insane. Those are some strange looking Jedi. Well, okay then. Or it keeps texting, but okay, they're not the texting about anything here. important. You play as Gideon Wyeth, and honestly, I kept forgetting his name. I keep <laughs> wanting to call him Terry because it's the Batman Beyond voice actor. Wait, really? Uh, do you always make your approaches upside down? <laughs> hey, Ethan. Uh, you know that this view is one of my favorite things about being a pilot. So Gideon... Kinda. I can kinda tell, but it's not the same voice. I heard him from one other place when I was, like, looking through a clip of a show that I... I can't remember what the show was, but I'm like, That's Terry McGinnis! Like, because I he was using Ethan. the same voice is what I mean. He's a hotshot pilot and war hero. He fought in something called the Independence Wars, which I assume was some kind of breakaway this thing. This twenty-something yuppie is a war hero. I I guess maybe maybe it's that war hero sense of I survived. So now I'm a war hero. Mm -hmm. Well, let's keep going. Yeah. Since they're by a faraway alien planet, but I'm not too sure. What is important is that humanity is in the middle of first contact. Where do you see the alien ship with your own eyes? The vids they've been showing don't do it justice. Hmm. Whoa. How big is this thing? It's... There's the, the Guinness voice. Oh, well, yeah, Watch I can hear it now. Watch out for secondaries from the alien vessel. Their activity back and forth from the surface has been increasing. It's always that the aliens will just have really bigger Copy ships that. than us. Starting my... Whoa. Just for no reason. Good timing there. The music swells and the Kmart Covenant are here. The Kmart they do seem Covenant. peaceful, so once you pilot your ship into the human space station, the game begins. Well, Gideon looks like a noodle person. Actually, yeah. all humanity look like noodle people. And you've got Why this are their Jack legs and Daxter so long? Like NBA high jump. So you go, oh, this must be like an adventure platformer. Then you go to training, and it turns out that Gideon knows Gunkata. <laughs> We're in a John Woo movie. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, some of those movies are great, but god damn it, we're in Max Payne, Star and Wars. this is before he gets space magic, but I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Oh, what? I'll start with the graphics. Star Wars. <laughs> on a level, for an Xbox game, it's It's a Jedi John Woo movie. Especially considering how big some of these maps Star can get. Wars. Looking back, Star Wars, sponsored by John Woo. Rising struggling to run on the Xbox makes a lot of sense. Oh look, the it's the Mako. The are still detailed, and the yeah. game has some really cool shader effects. Which does make it weird when they're lined or up the next war to the kind of blocky looking textures. It makes me wonder why they made these scenes so big instead of just scaling it back and improving what they had. Well, I do have a guess. Mm. Most Halo killers I've played really, really want to be Halo. It's yeah. cool with the intro with the big purple ship and the epic orchestra music. But then you fight the evil aliens who have different colors based on their rank. You know, red, blue, elite gold ones. They use energy weapons while humanity still uses bullets. These are just broad strokes. There's a lot more weird specific examples. But by the time uh, you get to the first not warthog section, it's very clear this game wouldn't be how it was without Halo. Except in Halo, the AI can actually drive you. 
I mean, it's fine to be inspired by things, and Halo certainly was. But yeah. as the game goes on, it just becomes kind of funny how blatantly they're doing it. That's so literally the map. fields with rocks and strange... That's literally one of the maps in Halo 3. ...alien structures. It's way bigger than Halo. It is larger, but drab and pointless. The more confined maps generally look and play so much better. They take advantage of the mechanics instead of throwing you into a big field to own zone some aliens. Some are for vehicle sections, but again, the bigger the map, the more barren the actual gameplay is. It is possible there's meant to be way more stuff here, but it was cut down for the Xbox. I don't know. The actual character art style is another mystery. The people have these cartoony, exaggerated forms, but nothing else in the game is like that. The design of everything else and the tone is going for realism. Now, I admit this could just be because Orson Scott Card's name was all over this game, but I feel a strange kind of disconnect that I can't quite put my finger on. I don't hate it or anything, it's just kind of odd to me. I would have liked if they embraced mm. a unique art style. I'm not sure what this was going for. The environments of a clean kind the of- The problem with having like less realistic people is it kind of pulls you out, but I will honestly say realism and looks doesn't really matter when you're trying to make a serious story. If you make it serious and you make it well, then anything could have an impact. Like I played PS3 games and PS2 where I cared more about the characters than I have for any like, uh, I'm trying to think. Quantic Dream game. I have never cared for any of those characters. Okay, work. Fair. I've cared more about random people and Dishonored more than I care about anything in this screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Oh but let me put it this way. When I was playing uh, Dragon Age Origins, and, Alist and there was a part where Alistair might have quit the party i almost i turned my playstation 3 off because i didn't want that, that to happen yeah sorry fable i keep accidentally talking over you it's okay where oh, goes i love alex he was a good person he was he was the fun one of the group 70s sci-fi look to them a lot of people have said it reminds them of Mass Effect 1, and I agree. Doubly so when you get space magic and get some of the same biotic powers. Some people say Mass So basically it's a mix of Mass Effect, John Woo, and Halo. Mass Effect copied them, but on this one I don't think so. Everyone knows what Star Wars is, and Jedi Academy had been out for a few years now. Advent Rising has a very vanilla flavor of space magic. It is interesting there was also mm. going to be a trilogy where decisions would carry over through save importing, but as you know, that didn't happen. As so, a Los Angeles CSI member would say, I think there's some DNA here, but I can't tell how much. Yeah, it's very clear they wanted to go with a bit a bit like trying to be bigger than Halo, but also being a bit like Mass Effect because people are liking that. Oh right, the shadows. Don't try to turn dynamic shadows on. I tried for ages to fix them, but the only thing I could do was get some blob shadows to work. And that only happened when they felt like it. Turns out they only work on a specific ATI card from 2003, so... What?! Work. As for the sound design, it's also decent. That's insane! Weapons have a good variety of effects, and it adds... That is dumb. That is dumb. ...impact to the combat. Guns, Fable. I do like the silly whoosh effects when you're reloading or flipping or anything else, really. Imagine if wars were fought by this, Fable. Flipping and whooshing. The clearly lands on his head. <laughs> yes, he somehow does a front roll. That's a good feature. Very welcome. The voice acting is good, and I do have to give them bonus points. They are working with some rough dialogue. I'm supposed to believe that there are not only one, but two advanced alien species out there with a simultaneous interest in little old Edimea. I mean, millions of years go by without so much as a hello there from the great beyond, and for some reason, they both picked today to come out of the closet? <laughs> <laughs> that sure was some exposition you just spoke. Ah, uh, yeah. Why don't you tell us more about how you were a latchkey kid? <laughs> oh, Thank this you, is too much. You? Destroyed my world. Oh dear, the little savage is upset. I have personally slain more of your pitiful kind than ever lived on that sad little rock you call home. Okay, the first line of, from the bad guy was okay, but then he exposited a little too much. And the and the guy's line was just terrible. You are going to wish you had died with the rest of your sorry world. 
My kite has perfected the art of slaughtering humans, little man. It is direction two, but this is hard to work with. It's yeah. really the random NPCs that get deep in the beans. <laughs> Take that! The most what fascinating the part is the music. The music is genuinely amazing. Like, the gap between quality of music and quality of game might be higher here than anything I've played outside of, like, an old Tim Fallen project. The issues come in with how they use it. Let's look at some cutscene clips so they have complete control of what's happening. Okay. that seashell was important? No, I think she was just trying to show him how to use the force. Also, his armor was reflecting in the water behind him. Like, right there. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. And he's gotten the Triforce Fable. Oh, no, not the Triforce. The music really brings that grand scale the game was trying for. The problem is, the music is pretty clearly separated into hype and be sad. It works out sometimes, what happens on screen matches up perfectly. So there's no metal ground. I mean, the aliens look okay, but they're clearly supposed to be elites. Any part of the music were about a character named River Song from Doctor Who? The what? We gotta climb down. All <laughs> this, now imagine you're just walking through a hallway, or doing nothing. Okay, they need to calm it down, because here's the problem with music like that. It loses its impact if you use it constantly. <laughs> oh, wow. It's the general theme. It's also a very similar melody. Yeah. <laughs> over and over again. Everything you're doing is just the most important thing ever. This will be my last Halo comparison, and it's an important just one. Just imagine this going on while well, you're fixing a pipe. The big exciting music is used appropriately for the moment. Here's what Advent Rising does. Oh, they're just doing it while we're just looking through here instead of fighting. Because I love this track from Halo. Really great. Yeah. Marty isn't unleashing the strings while you're staring at rocks. Trying to make every little thing huge ultimately makes nothing stand out. This needed exactly. some more low-key music at points, or just silence like here. Still, it's a very good soundtrack. Sometimes it does bug out and it'll play the cutscene music at the same time as the level music. It's usually so over the top that sometimes I couldn't tell, but there are cutscene controls to restart it. Except for one time it cursed me and played the healing sound over and over again. <laughs> Oh, you should expect dear. some sound bugs from time to time. Oh, the fire. The stock fire okay, sound my effect. Mistake. I looked up Xbox footage of this, and that is the intended sound effect. Please, continue. As you play, the gameplay does evolve a bit, so I'll need to talk about the I story like that here helmet, though. When Terry first gets in the station, he needs to yeah, do some weapons nice. training. Advent I just realized it's basically just an N7 helmet. It has a unique control scheme, in the same way there are road signs warning of unique children. On PC, <laughs> you aim by using your mouse's scroll wheel to aim left or right. This is awkward, but seems like a thing you would get used to. On PC, you could have free aim and it should work out fine. But this was based around Xbox, who actually had it way worse here. Oh, because no. the right stick controlled your camera and aiming. So you just oh, move the camera and end up locking no. onto another target. It's awful here because you and the game don't always agree on what you're aiming at. When the system is working, the camera's spinning all over the place. You're quickly aiming at things behind you, things out of sight. It's already a chaotic game, so sometimes I didn't cool, realize something was like bugging out. The bad man in front of me would just stop in playing. Ratchet and Clank. It does look sick if you Yeah, they look like they fit right in there with a lot of the crazier stuff in Ratchet and Clank. Don't actually get sick from the camera whipping around. It does I should know, as a veteran of all the Ratchet and Clank games. In another direction. You could get tempted to plug a controller in and try, but it's not better. Plus, if you plug one in during the game, things will really start spinning. Oh! I think this should be a controller game, but the targeting system makes that difficult. When it's working how it's intended, it can be fun. When it's not a lobotomized Drake of the 99 Dragons, it can be a unique version of Max Payne. Saying that is incredibly generous. Essentially, you level up your weapons by using them. They might okay. just be increased effectiveness, but you can unlock alt fires and other cool stuff. This also That's extends nice. to jumping and dodging. The more you flail around in combat, the better you get at it. Movements get a passive slow-mo effect added, animations change. I really appreciate when games do this over just bigger numbers. You don't go from chump to demigod though, since from the beginning Gideon is pretty insane. I have to sprinkle some oh. story in here. Okay. On the station, Gideon hangs out with his brother Ethan and talks to his fiancée, girl. 
Girl is what? a scientist, so you might think she has a bigger role to play in a first contact story, but no. You're not supposed to want girl's scientific insight, you want to be inside of her pants. I mean, Jesus, it's more than- Does she even have a name? A cake, it's like the whole birthday party. At least by one. Code Geass Barilla oh. Pasta People standards. <laughs> Code Geass standard of pasta people. <laughs> Code Geass does have some very stringy designs, similar to, uh... Unfortunately, Gundam Seed, but we don't talk about Seed here. After murdering an Australian in a boss fight, you go to meet the aliens. Murder. These are the Aurelians, and they're more than just friendly. Not wanting to risk anyone important, they give Gideon the Universal Translator. The Aurelians aren't just here to help and trade with us, but they view humanity as gods. I don't know about you, but I find this baffling. Either the yeah. Aurelians are deeply, deeply disturbed, or they've picked up some really convincing Heaven's Gate members. But they're also here to warn us <laughs> of an enemy alien race, the Seekers. They will come, and this time, they will leave no survivors. How long do we have? Maybe two days, probably less. Two days? What can we do in two days? This is a great tragedy. You will all be killed. What kind of <sighs> weapons will they be using? They throw rocks. Rocks? They throw rocks? Asteroids. The Seekers then show up instantly. Not even Why would they... you not say that in the start that they throw giant asteroids at people? Just saying they throw rocks like that doesn't, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Did that guy time. actually have they... the translator when he heard that, or no? I'm not sure, because that would be some poor translation. Attack the colony the station and true to their name, start scanning people. They're looking for something, but it's not clear what. This leads into the big and only story decision of the game. Both Ethan and Girl are hurt, and you can only help one into an escape pod. It looked like a choice, but the first time I played it loaded me in already holding Girl. At first I thought it was a cut choice because I didn't want Girl, I would have saved Ethan. <laughs> On playing the game again, I got to choose properly. Oh. It does spawn you right next to Girl, so I'm sure it bugged for more than one person. You crash on the planet, then need to escape it before the Seekers destroy it. You and whoever you save meet up with a new character named Captain Steel. This interaction goes way better if you have your hero brother with you. I imagine you'd like some help prepping for takeoff? Sure, sure. It looks like there may have been a turret section planned here, but instead you go right to the Aurelians. It's uh. here that you learn how to use space magic. Now, I appreciate when a story doesn't explain every stupid detail on how a power works, but they give yeah. you nothing special here. Earlier what? you mentioned something. Something about hidden powers? Yeah, I that's Terry. <laughs> it is Terry. <laughs> like, you can hear it coming right out there. All of the civilized races have individuals with the seeds of this power. Our prophecies... Okay, no one knows how it works, but they believe that the Force comes from humans. They use their downtime to show uh -huh. Terry silently practicing his new Mindgate conspiracy brain powers. <laughs> it's <laughs> like there should be a voice over here explaining a little more about what he's doing and what's yeah. going on. Instead, they just say he's a wizard, which is really strange for a sci-fi setting like this. Yeah. Who cares? You have magic now. You get to play around with it in a space battle, and then whoever you saved dies. Oh. Whoever you saved dies. The powers you join more unlock automatically as you play the game. They have the same mastery level up system too, so they get better and better. Though like the weapons, there's nothing really out there with them. You have a force push, a lift. You can shoot energy or ice, which gets really absurd in the end game. Slow time, the vanguard charge, there's still a lot here. Combine that with all the weapons you have, and there are a lot of ways to play yeah, this game. Yeah, there are more than Sadly, a few Mass Effect a power does uh, take the influences slot. here. This means no supercharging around carrying dual pistols or something like that. Which I would have liked, but the controls are already weird enough as is. Even with that barrier, the game can be enjoyable. Yet, right behind the weird control layer are two more. The first being the enemy variety. They run out of new uh, stuff to throw at you very fast, with the exception of some boss fights. Thing. Even one new thing showed up probably the original Xbox, not the 360. Yeah, that's probably why it's having so much trouble running it. Oof. really altered how I played the game. The enemies and the weapons are just too similar to each other. Mm. Because on the surface it seems like there should be a lot of variety, but in practice it feels very repetitive to play. I mean, when you're fighting an entire alien race, there should be a lot of uh, variety. The levels I talked about before contribute to this since you just fight in a big empty plane. You'll see a big flat area full of enemies for a battle, but then you could just walk around it. I'm not sure how to word this, but uh. enemies will frequently feel less like obstacles and more like decoration. 
You could run way over there to fight aliens, but it's pointless. There's not like a hidden weapon or anything like that in the maps. Well, You'll that also stinks. blatantly see allies and enemies just respawning endlessly in front of you in some parts. Oh. I like protecting NPCs in these kinds of games, but here there's no reason to. Yeah, I used to do that in Halo 3 all the time and try to save as many marines. They just come back. And the enemies stay so much worse because they'll respawn three feet behind you. You take the Dear camera God. up and the game plops down three, four, five enemies there. And where it happens, it happens endlessly. It's not just them pouring out of a door or something. Ooh. It's a shorter game too, but by the end, I was so sick of the combat. If the camera spins around, you wipe out a group of enemies and can move on, then great. When it's set up like this, the camera can endlessly spin around and around as you kill enemies forever for no reason. Oof. It goes from being a space adventure into some kind of purgatory. I would guess they did this to make up for the AI, which isn't very good and breaks frequently. Which leads you to the next layer of just how broken this game is. Even with a fan patch that fixes quite a few bugs integrated, they're still everywhere. The camera freaks out and locks you into an angle. An ally blocks off an elevator. Well Enemies getting elevators stuck, so you have to AoE to get it to move. A door you need to go through refuses to open until you restart the entire level. Stuck that in a wall, sucks. stuck moonwalking, stuck hanging from my hopes and dreams. <laughs> stuck is such a frequent word. How about stuck in a first person mode which should not exist? What? And of course you have how is that even crashes. possible? This is highly unstable. But before I finish, I, I do want to talk know. a little bit more about the story. To okay, so this game has many problems. They probably should have worked on it longer, and it has uh, many problems with all around its design and whatnot. Sum it up, it's abrupt. They have pulled back to regroup for the final onslaught. It has been the highest honor. Halt! These are ours! Status report. We've just secured the main ports and transit points of Avernus. The Eastern Rebels' defenses are crumbling. The story is paced like it's late for work. The Whoa. rest of the game after the colony escape becomes escape <laughs> the Aurelian homeworld and tell the Galactic Council on the Seeker. So basically, we're going through this game as all as we are, and basically in each and every cutscene, it's just exposition for a lot of it. Dear God. Yeah. I mean, they didn't have much space on discs back then. True, but you can spread it out by having it in the gameplay. Uh, that implies competency. Yeah, you're you're right. Like you do a story with the game, but mm, you're right. So much was said with so little happening that I actually looked on Wikipedia. These two sentences are over half the game, which would be fine if they weren't trying to make the story seem bigger than it is. Check out this breakneck roller coaster of tone shifting. You know, it just occurred to me that this is the only thing I have left from home. You mean you forgot to pack underwear? What the fuck? Hey, I was just kidding. Your underwear is your own business. You can't come on this mission, Marin. Oh, yes, I can. Let me explain. There's nothing left of our world. Nothing left of humanity. To venture out on a ridiculously dangerous mission with both of us? I don't know what I was thinking. That's less of a fucking whiplash with a whip and more of a wavelength because it goes up and down really fast. If what I the lost fuck? You, I, I mean, if either of us were. He recovered from girl dying quick. I thought the Seekers only wiped out a human planet, but he's talking like they're Adam and Eve. Apparently all of humanity is likely wiped out and I found out after an underwear joke. There were opportunities to talk about the scale of this happening, but they only talked about this planet. Unless this is the only human planet left and like the wars wipe things out? I don't know. It doesn't establish its setting well. And they yeah. do so little with the characters even though there's opportunity to. Terry living the shadow of his heroic brother, losing him and having to measure up to him is an interesting idea. I honestly expected more cliche moping about his brother, but that didn't happen outside of a single scene right after. It's so strange because there are set up obvious things to do, but instead nothing happens. There are so many cutscenes of characters being introduced and then dying 10 minutes later. If this sounds off fuck? for an Orson Scott Card story, it's because it's not his story. Oh. He wrote the dialogue for Advent Rising and not all of it. The main story was written by the designer and his brother who had never made a game before. The that explains a lot. Yep. Dear Lord. Have mercy on them for they know not what. Brothers did end up making the Infinity Blade series, which was a really good franchise on mobile. The last I saw it was pulled for reasons unknown. Advent Rising actually had some comics released too, which did explore the characters a little better. Though it oh was yeah, just this is the time where, where like EA, I don't think they're actually affiliated with EA, was trying to get into all kinds of different media. You remember that? All the comics and animations for all the crazy crap? Yes, I remember Dead Space the movie. And Dead Space the comic book and Dead Space the on-rail shooter. 
just covering the same events with some interesting yep. artwork, you can never expect a perfect adaptation. At the end of the game, they get to the council, and Captain Steel reveals that she's magic too. Roll credits. Now, uh, what if I told you the story gets interesting after this? What? After the credits? I, the Senate this feels illegal. Envoy from the client world Aurelia. Members of the Senate, I have come before you today with news that is both shocking and unavoidable. This does become Star Wars prequel territory for a bit, so I'll condense it down. The Seekers okay. have been active for over a thousand years, uplifting other species into the Galactic Council. They've acted very nobly, except for this recent deal with humanity. So it takes a human to accuse them. I am here to accuse the Seekers of destroying my world. I was witness to their bloody arrival on Edumea, their deliberate and directed murder. Yeah, he now looks more like Keanu Reeves. ...of my fellow people and the complete eradication of my... This is simply unbelievable. These charges are preposterous. The Quiet safety... alien furry. ...are responsible for the sapiency of many of us uh, in this very room. I am I wrong? ...that you use your vaunted sapiency, Senator, for this data is undeniable. The Enco have requested the floor, as is the right of the accused. There's a lot more bickering. Until... The hell? Hello, brother. The Sith? Ethan. Hello. What? What? You yelled out something. I said hello uh, to my family. Oh my me. Oh, okay. You are a true human, my children. Collective history, countless religions, all their witness. The mixing uh -huh. makes it hard to understand at points, but I'm interested in where this is going. Mm. Whoever you saved for the escape pod wasn't killed. They were turned into a being called a Korim or Korim, something like that. Mm. Whatever they are, they claim to be the real humanity. They claim to have ordered the secret genocide of humanity because humans as we know them are a race of frauds. Which is true, but in this case we were imitating the Korim's divine form. <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> I don't know what Mandalore means by us being a race of frauds, and it's true. Human beings are part of the plan of some unknown usurper. This does raise uh. a lot of questions. Are the Quorum something of a Seeker's creation they use to dominate the Galactic Council? Are they actually under orders from the Quorum they can convert certain humans to them somehow? Maybe their telekinetic Jimmy Neutron brains make them really into eugenics. You're not a true human unless you have the Force. This reveal opens up a lot of intrigue and can move some things forward, but it's happening at the last possible second. At least yeah. you do get to fight a god like it's some kind of JRPG, but this is such a waste. <laughs> Helgen then opens up a black hole which sucks up the monster and uh. himself, accidentally getting banished to the Himalayas. What? This is the end. All hope is lost. Okay, now we're in Star Wars again. Come with me, human. There is much to be done. Is there? I don't think so. I don't think it's being continued. The marketing machine for this game was huge. There would be more comics, Orson Scott Card would write a novel, there would be two more games to come, but none of that happened. There was also a contest to win a million dollars by finding secrets in-game. This what? was- What? Why would you- That sounds insane. Shut down under the pretense of cheating, but in reality, the studio and publisher were running out of money. Yeah, no sounds about right. No one did Halo, and yes, overall, I think it's a bad game. There are cool ideas in that, but the polish is unbearable. Listen, and the only one that can kill Halo is Xbox themselves, which they've been doing a great job. The story is all over the place, but nowhere at the same time. Advent Rising is good remake material. I would love to see the idea fleshed out properly, because even with all the jank, there are these flashes of being a superhuman warrior that are great. Even after getting- Like I always quite literally say, the ones that make you the most disappointed and angry are the ones with potential. Having a fan patch integrated into it, I can't really recommend it. No matter what happens with it, I'm pretty sure the soundtrack will live on. Even if it's just in some people's Supreme Commander playlist from time to time. Mm. Come back next time for another CRPG. One that's been taking a long, long time to record. Heartburn? Even worse, things get, uh, you know, messy. Ew. Ew. 
I didn't need to know that. I think I know where this music is from right now. With the boom of retro style games, which genre would you like to see come back? I want an RTS comeback, but the problem is they keep trying to balance that for esports and multiplayer. Some of Dear God, we don't need esports RTSs. We just need RTSs. Thank you very much. Some of the most fun RTS games I played were horribly unbalanced, but they were fun. If you try to have yeah. this micro balanced game like StarCraft and Rock, Paper, Scissors, it gets harder and harder to have silly units in it. I think something could happen. Adding on to this question, have any retro style games done something as good or better than childhood favorites? Hmm. That's a tough one because you said retro style, and it's like there have been genre improvements for sure. Um, Sonic Mania is really good, but I didn't play a lot of Sonic as a kid. Axiom Verge is really good, I don't think Hotline Miami hmm. counts. I guess I don't have anything Probably screaming not. at me on that one. Fuck, Mary Kill, Seth, Lowry, and Spooner Briggs. What? Seth Zine Tech. Captain Spooner Briggs. Who the hell is Captain... I don't know these I other people. Mary Seth, and I think Lowry might deserve to die. <laughs> I hate to marry Seth. Guess I'd get with Spooner Briggs for a night. He has a nice smile. I almost said Spoonie. I hope Spoonie's doing okay, too. Okay, that's it for now. Stay safe. Uh, is that a... What is it with Halo killers and these alarms going off? Oh, yeah, there's a... What? What is it, Pable? Mabel. Oh, just thank you not loud. Don't mind me. Alright, well, thank you all so much if you like what we're doing here. You know that stuff. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell us what you want us to watch next. Tell us what we should be watching. Tell us what we need to be doing. Uh, tell us how your day is. I might reply. I usually reply. <laughs> and that's Platy. We're gonna do another video where we're gonna skin him alive. Laddy help. I think I found upgrades and junk for the uh, for the PC, but I don't know if I should add it to the total bill because it's a slightly above the goal and it makes me oh. feel bad already. And then we're going to use him as a football. We're going to turn Platy into the old pig pigskin while he's still alive. Honestly, just adding it onto the bills is so bad, but still, it's already asking too much. But yes, thank you all so much, and we'll see you guys next time over on YouTube. Bye.